What's going on guys? Vic VP back with the Game Case Arcades video. On this one today, we're going to be reviewing the Ambernick RG35XXSP handheld. Yeah, it looks like a Game Boy SP. Let's take a look. All right, you know the drill. If you're not following me on all the socials, what are you waiting for? Be sure to follow me at Vic underscore VP. There's a link tree link down below. It's convenient. Go there. You're going to see all social media links and also my website, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, YouTube. Also, be sure to like, subscribe, and comment down below. Let me know what you think about this device from Ambernick. Is it a hit or miss? Spoiler alert. I like it for what it does. Now, if you are new here, be sure to check out my channel. I am a gamer at heart, but my main occupation is building arcades, virtual pinball machines, multicades. Whether you are a business or somebody that has a man cave slash game room set up in their house, maybe you'll like some of my videos. And for my regulars, do not worry. I'm not changing my channel to a whole review handheld channel. I'm not doing that. Ambernick reached out to me and said, hey, Vic, you seem like a great person that would like to check out this product that we have. I said, send it on over. Let me give it an honest review. And here is that honest review. Now, again, Ambernick did reach out to me. They sent me a message via TikTok that went into WhatsApp. I don't know if you could really consider this as a paid promotion, but they did give this to me for free. In return, though, I do have this item in my TikTok shop. I'll post the link down below. You could check it out. You could also buy it there. Apparently, my link does have a little bit of a discount. So if you are interested in this at the end of this review, be sure to check out my TikTok shop. Now, in all honesty, I'm not going to have too many videos on this device. I'm going to have this review video. I'm going to have a tips and tricks video. And then I most likely will also do a video on how to add ROMs to this device. In all honesty, I did have to add a couple of ROMs that I did notice that were missing on this. Mostly, our favorite plumber is not on this. Now, granted, keep in mind, I feel like there is a reason why. There's actually a couple of hacks slash bootlegs. It's actually very funny. I found our red plumber. They have a game for the Mega Drive. There was never a Mario game on the Mega Drive, so I did notice that. But again, this review right here, I'm going to give you my brutal, honest opinion. I'm not going to shill. I did get this for free, but I'm not going to shill and say this is the best thing i ever gotten. I, I'm not that type of channel. Now, if you listened in the intro, I did say that I do like this device for what it is slash what it does. What exactly does that mean? This right here is great for playing games from N64 and back. Granted, I'll be honest, some N64 games, it's a little iffy because it is missing the analog stick. So let's just say N64 and back. We're not looking to play PS2. This doesn't have GameCube on it. This does not have the Wii on it. That is where your argument comes in where I could get a Steam Deck and a ROG Ally. I understand that. But for the price that this is going for, I think it's a solid device. Now, when Amber and I reached out to me, they sent me the link that said, hey, Vic, add this to your TikTok shop, and then we're going to send you the sample. I got excited when it was coincidentally this exact unit. It was the SP. There's really two reasons that like caught my eye slash I would be looking into this device. Number one, I do have a three-year-old daughter. I'm trying to get her into gaming. But the hard thing right now is giving her a controller. Most of these controls that I give her the thumb travel, it just, it's not working out for a three-year-old. I do have Xbox controllers. I do have a Switch, the Joy-Cons. I have, for example, this right here, the SNES controller. And unfortunately, at three years old, it's just kind of difficult for her to play. So when I saw this, I said, oh, this is going to be awesome. My three-year-old should at least be able to play this because there's not much thumb travel to hit the buttons. And lastly, portability. That is what this device is. This is portable. I could take this, it fits in the palm of my hand. I could just drop this in my pocket and go. Whereas the argument, the ROG Ally or the Steam Deck is better, I can't pocket this. So again, the major plus side to this is portability. It plays great. Everything retro. So you got arcade games, Game Boys. All the Game Boys are here, which is amazing to play on an SP style device the screen on this is great and also the battery life on this i've only so far charged this one time full charge 
I've been streaming this on TikTok to promote it. it. Those streams have been about three hours long in total. And then I'm shooting this video and I have right now 50% battery. If I was gonna guesstimate, I would say this should have solid five hours worth of game time. And my brightness on the screen is one notch below max. So that's a thumbs up in my book. Now be sure to stay tuned on the channel. I have only two more videos planned for this. This right here is the review video. My second video is gonna be some tips and tricks that you should do when you get this device. I did have to enable some things that weren't enabled stock. It's not awful, it's not difficult, but I do recommend that you do some of the changes such as enabling retro achievements. Also, this does have PSP, so you do have the option or I should say you have to make the hotkey for the axis swap. This also does have a rumble motor in it, so you do have to enable that in RetroArch. So while you're gaming, it does rumble like a rumble pack on the N64. And then the last video I will be making about adding ROMs. It's not that difficult, it's a thing. Uh, I obviously won't be supplying ROMs, but that's probably the biggest argument when it comes to these devices. Not just Ambernick, you got Pal Kitty. All these devices, people go, oh, I could get it better, I could make it better with this device. But all in the end, you do need the ROMs for it. This unit right here, this is the 64 gig unit plus 128 gigs. This has two SD cards in it, and I think it clocks in at over 18,000 playable games. Now this thing did come in a nice box. It also came with a carrying case, but to my surprise, it also came with an HDMI cable. You could connect this to your TV and play. I kind of question that though, because this to me, it's really intended to be a handheld on the go. You could put Bluetooth on this and then connect a controller. I haven't tested that, but that's what other people are showing off that you connect this to the TV and then grab a wireless controller and you could play from the couch. But in all honesty, that kind of setup, it defeats the purpose. This right here is intended for mobile on the go gaming. A setup like that connecting to an HDMI out TV with a Bluetooth controller, you might as well rock either a Steam Deck, ROG Ally, or a PC based system. Now I'm gonna most likely shoot some B-roll of this, but let's just look at the device itself. This thing is mimicking a Game Boy SP. I'm 33, almost 34 years old. I grew up on Game Boys. This is solid. This is a solid replica. And in all honesty, the screen is much bigger than your standard SP. It's actually very funny. People think this is an actual SP. Is it modded? No, this is just Ambernix version of it. The screen is great, bright, solid, and big. Buttons are great. You got your D-pad, you got your traditional X, Y, A, B. And then also on the rear, you do have four shoulder buttons. So you have L1, L2, R1, R2. Start, select, and the menu. Obviously, there is no analog stick. So I did see some people saying, hey, how can you play PSP on this without the analog stick? Again, stay tuned in another video. I'm going to give you a tip where you have to enable a hotkey to swap from D-pad to analog. Now, that's the device itself. Again, it's mimicking a Game Boy SP. What more do you want? You could close the lid. It goes into sleep mode. Put it in your pocket. You don't have to worry about accidentally hitting any buttons. Wake it up by opening up the lid and you're good to go. Now let's take a look at the operating system on this. Now I did connect this to my stream setup using their HDMI and a game capture card. Again, we're gonna be talking about the operating system on this. You're gonna see other people or modders talking about upgrading this and swapping this out for garlic OS. I don't think you should do that. That's not what this device is intended for. The stock OS, honestly, very user friendly, whether you're a beginner or if you're an expert level emulation kind of guy like me, the operating system is solid. It does what you need it to do. You can go ahead, search for your games, launch your game, save your game, exit your game, do a different game. It's basic and simple. This isn't launch box. This isn't big box hyperspin. A device like this, it, you don't want to do all that. The stock OS is solid. Now off the bat, you're gonna see these two options here. This is where your games are. So there's Game Rooms and then RA Game, which is RetroArch. Game Rooms is Ambernix like modified RetroArch. It really makes things very simple for a beginner person to save state, load state, swap, scan lines, and enable overlays. Me personally, I play all my games through RetroArch. I'll explain why later. You have the option to put some favorites. So instead of you searching a game, you could look up your favorites. I don't have any. There's also a history list. Very convenient, awesome history setup. You can also search your games. 
So if you're the type like me that knows what you want to play right off the bat, you could come here and search your games. There is an app center. This is kind of pointless, I'll be honest. There's music and videos. This, uh, this is pointless. The only thing that's kind of convenient is if you go into apps, SD card one, you have these options here where you could change like bezels and how long the screen is on and all that. That's probably the only thing convenient. Other than that, it's kind of pointless. Next and lastly, you do have settings. Settings is pretty simple, basic stuff. This does have an IO test, so you could test your buttons and making sure everything works. This is also where I discovered that there's an actual rumble motor in this. If you see there, menu and select key will test the motor. I'll bring it up to the mic so you could hear it. I assume you could hear that. There is an actual rumble motor in it. You do have to enable it though in RetroArch. Again, stay tuned for a tips and tricks video. I'll put that in a separate video. But all in all, solid and basic stuff. You could also do network settings. You could enable Wi-Fi. Another reason why I launched games through RetroArch is because I enabled achievements, retro achievements. You do need Wi-Fi for that. It doesn't come stock out of the box. Again, stay tuned for another video. Apparently also, you could link two of these devices wirelessly to play two player games. Unfortunately, Ambernick did not send me a second device, so I can't test that theory, but you could do that. Also, you do have Bluetooth settings. Like I mentioned before, some people take this device connected to their TV and then connect a Bluetooth controller, sit on their couch, and then game like that. Again, though, this device is really meant for handheld use and such. But all in all, your basic stuff. Now let's talk about the actual emulator slash game setup. I'm gonna do a pros and cons list, but let's just go with the flow here. We're gonna first launch our games inside of game rooms. The one con you can see off the bat, I have to pick the SD card, kind of annoying, but if I go to the search function, it searches between the two SD cards. I'm gonna go into SD card one, and we're gonna launch a Game Boy game, okay? This is one thing that I, I, I noticed. Uh, we're gonna launch a random game, we'll do this A-Force, Armor Force, and as you can see, if you're a retro head like me, again, this is a Game Boy game. We didn't play Game Boy on a white screen. So that's like a con for this. But like I mentioned before, this like modified retro arc, it's just user friendly. If I hit the menu button, I could quickly go into a save state, load state, and I could change scan line. So I could go into like HD and I could put a bezel, for example, which is overlay. If I go back, very convenient very quick. That's what's great about this, but like I mentioned before, I don't like playing my Game Boy games on a white screen. Again, Game Rooms is RetroArch modified via Ambernic. It just makes things very convenient. I'm going to now exit conveniently, and I'm going to go into RetroArch game. I personally always launch my games through RetroArch. Main number one is I do like retro achievements, and number two... The bezels and stuff is, as far as Game Boy, it's obviously going to be better. Now, again, the only downside, though, is that, like, you know, it's not very easy user-friendly. And apparently in RA Games RetroArch, you could enable cheats. So I'm going to launch the same game. And that right there is the biggest thing there. You see the green hue. Now, if I hit the menu button, though, it's going to actually launch RetroArch. So this right here, somebody very new beginner is going to get kind of scared. They're not going to know what's going on here. You could go into like save state and you could save and load. Or this already has like hotkeys set up. So if I hold menu and L1, I could load my state. And if I hold menu and R1, I could save my state. Again, it's just more like, you know, intermediate level. But like I mentioned before, I'm a big fan of retro achievements. This specific game right here does not have retro achievements. Also closing the game, I have to go here and close content. Again, a couple of extra steps. I always launch my games though through RetroArch. I'm gonna stay in RetroArch because that's really the only, you know, differences. Um, and again, I'm a big sucker for these uh, retro achievements. I'm gonna go back, we'll maybe load up, I don't know, a, a Super Nintendo game. I wanna just kinda get a game that will give us retro achievements. We'll launch the Adams Family, why not? And like I said, Retro achievements is not enabled off the bat, but there you go. You can see right there, retro achievements I now could play. You do need Wi-Fi for that. You sign up on retro achievements and make the account. And this is like global. So if you play on your Steam Deck, if you play on this, your retro achievements do carry over. So pretty solid. 
Now, again, I didn't make a list, but there's a bunch of pros to this. Again, it's great for what it's supposed to do slash intended to do, which is play retro consoles. If you're the type that's going to want to play PSP, I wouldn't even look at any company besides a Steam Deck, ROG Ally, or one of those, you know, PC handhelds. That's really what you want out of that. As far as the cons, number one, our red plumber. I don't buy, but you do have to add ROMs. Adding ROMs, though, is easy. You have to watch a couple of videos. You download the ROM, you put in the SD card, and then it's done. You don't have to scrape anything. That's just easy. Number two, there's several duplicates. Um, and I'm going to have to test further because I feel like there's duplicates within the SD cards. Again, the first SD card is a 64 gig, which is like stock. I think it has the operating system on it. The second SD card is the additional 128 gigs. And I believe there's games in this. The same games are in both SD cards and such. so me personally, I'm going to be removing games and then putting in my own ROMs because I also don't like the way that they labeled slash named their ROMs. One other big con, like I said, if I go into game rooms or if I go into RetroArch, I have to pick the SD card. So off the bat, like if I pick SD card one, there's also another thing about game rooms. If you look carefully, there's no N64 in game rooms. Again, SD card one game rooms, right? But if I go back to RetroArch, SD card one, I have N64 here. So another plus to launching in RetroArch, I guess. Uh, that's just, like I said, I, I noticed that. But the big thing is like, if I go into ports, right? There's 11 ports here. Again, I'm in SD card one. You see this Cannonball? Cool, we have Cannonball, which is Outrun. If I go into SD card two though, and go into ports, I have Cannonball again. So that's where I'm believing that there's duplicates. Again, in SD card two, another thing like, I don't know, if I go into like, is it Game Boy? Uh, Game Boy has more games. There's a 1600 Game Boy games. I gotta see real quick. I think it's like Game Boy Advance. They have like, look at this. They have naming weird on SD card two. You can see there, you see that number? One, two, three, four, five, six, golden. Like, I don't like my ROMs being labeled like that because now it's not in alphabetical order. So it's a big chunk and then like that, I'm not a fan of that. So that's where I'm assuming that there is. Now, if I do go to a search and let's just say I look up, um, I don't know, let's look up Pokemon. That's usually a very popular thing. My buddy Ray was like, oh, Pokemon must be cool on that. I didn't play Pokemon growing up. <gasps> I know, horrifying, I know. But if I just go to Pokemon, like you're gonna see here, this is pretty cool with the search function. You're gonna see like, oh, you might see duplicates. You're like, Vic, why are there two? Let's go to Pokemon Puzzle Challenge. Why are there two of them? If you look at the top there, there's one option that's GBC. So it's Game Boy Color, blank. That launches in game rooms. If I go down, it's the same game, but it launches in RetroArch. So that's why there's two of them, but there's not two ROMs. It's just, it's giving you two emulator options. Um, again, like I said, there's like, you can see here, see we have pinball, uh, Pokemon pinball. There's a rumble and then an SGB. Uh, it's the same game. That's where, like I'm saying, there's a couple of duplicates. Again, another con, I had to go into RetroArch and then change a couple of settings to even show achievements. It's not that difficult. Somebody on Reddit did like the guide. It's like five steps. It's just kind of like, why did I have to do that? But they're not into retro achievements. It's, I feel like it, it should have been stock. Uh, again, mentioning it before PSP, I had to go into hotkey settings and enable an access swap because I couldn't play, for example, GTA. I'm going to just go and look up our favorite, you know, plumber. If I look up Mario, uh, you're going to see it actually made me chuckle. There is a Mario game on the Mega Drive, which is not a thing uh it's obviously a hack so right here this list right here number one number two number three all stars i added these roms very simple add you just put the sd card in go to the folder um their folder naming is kind of weird as you can see like all stars it says sfc that's super famicom i know it as super nintendo is it the same console i'm not going to go into that debate but you just got to figure that out. NES is Famicom. So you, when you look at your folders, you just kind of kind of figure out where we're going. But I'm going to go real quick. I'm going to go down. And you're going to see, see like here, we have Super Mario World MD, Mega Drive. 
there's maybe I'm wrong, but there's I don't think there's a Mega Drive Mario game. <laughs> I don't think that's that's a thing. So this to me is like a hack uh, per se. It is not Mario Two or Mario One. It's not it's not it at all. No, this is definitely a hack because Mario never had diamonds. <laughs> Again, I feel like it's just like a given. They had to remove that for probably reasons. I don't blame them. If you're like me and some people, like I said, they have that argument, why get this, I could do this more, then you probably have ROMs. I would definitely suggest you know, taking out their ROMs and then putting in your own. But again, if you're a beginner getting into the world of like emulation, this unit is solid. Don't don't get that twisted. It's a solid unit. I like, I like what it is, what it's for. It's solid. It gets you gaming, and it comes preloaded. Yes, this does come preloaded, but you might have to add a couple of games or two. For example, there's several games that are like the Japanese version, so it's got like, you know, it's not English. You can't read the menu. You just got to prepare yourself. You might want to start swapping out ROMs. Now, I just launched All Stars, but I did it through Game Rooms. I'm going to launch that inside of RetroArch because I want to show you again the Retro Achievements. You can see there I have my login, Retro Achievements. Awesome. I know I'm going to exaggerate Retro Achievements. Once you get into Retro Achievements world, it, it gets a lot of fun. It's, it's fun. Last thing to note about Retro Achievements, if you are going to play an arcade game, you have to launch that through Final Burn Alpha, so FB Neo. Retro Achievements only works through FB um, Core. So if you are like that, be sure to launch it, not from MAME, but from FB Neo. Again, that whole SD card thing, you got to pick it. So this game might not be on that. I launched an arcade game that doesn't have achievements. Uh, but all in all, solid. Now again, this has great consoles on it. The Mega Drive, which is also the Genesis. Um, you know, this like MSX is like a keyboard. I would probably remove that. Uh, this does also have the DS. DS is iffy because you also may need the second screen. You may need the touch. So me personally, I'm not looking to play DS. I didn't launch each game. I'm not, I'm not that fond of DS. But um, I would assume that like half the games that are here will work without the touch screen. Um, I'm going to launch one just for kicks because you could also swap and put like, you know, one screen full screen and, and such. So... I'm not looking to play DS though on this device. I would rather play that either on my PC or on the Steam Deck. Now, for example, this Spider-Man game, it looks like I could get away playing this because there's not much activity on the other screen going on. I could always swap around. So I feel like, may, and I haven't tested it though, but I feel like all the DS games that they have, they probably like only put the games that will work without the touchpad. Is that true? I don't know, but I would assume that. I'm Spider-Man. Cool. <laughs> so final thoughts on this. I'm a big fan of this device. I love it for what it is slash what it's intended to do. And in my opinion, that is to play retro games. N64 and back, even including arcade, in the palm of your hand, portability, throw it in your pocket and go about your day. It's also great for the kiddo. Again, my three-year-old, she has been able to actually play some games. So for what I wanted it for, it is solid. Again, a couple of cons on this. There are emulators slash games on this that I don't really think should be on it. But then again, I kind of feel like they have these SD cards made for other Ambernic devices, such as with the analog sticks. With some modifications, you could get those games working. Like I mentioned before, the PSP, I had to enable a hotkey, and I was able to swap from D-pad to analog. Battery Life has been amazing on this. I've only charged it one time. I've done two TikTok streams showing this thing off and I'm doing this video here and I still have Battery Life to go. We're going on vacation. It's gonna be a four hour flight. I have no doubts that this thing will last that flight. Again, if I was gonna guesstimate, this is gonna have a solid five to six hours of playtime. And like I said, my brightness on my screen is one notch below max. You can't, you can't complain about the battery on this. The last time I'm going to say it, this thing is great for what it's intended to do. Yes, this thing is better if you're looking to play PS2, GameCube, Wii, and such. VicVP, Gamecase Arcades, the R35XXSP. I love it.